Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody, praise the Lord. Good morning, Ebenezer Baptist Church. Good morning, Ebenezer everywhere. We welcome all who are joining for our Sunday morning worship experience, either in person or virtually. We welcome you to the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, America's Freedom Church, and your place of worship. I am Minister Dominique King, and I bring you greetings on behalf of the entire clergy and staff here at Ebenezer, and we are excited that you decided to join us for worship. Listen, Ebenezer everywhere, will you share this broadcast? Will you invite someone to worship with you and let them know that they do not want to miss today's worship service? Listen, Ebenezer, right here in the pews, if you are live, as you all are coming into the sanctuary, will you greet someone either on your left or your right? in front of you or behind you. Just give them a good godly smile. Let them know that you're excited to see them for worship on this morning and let them know that you cannot wait to see what God has in store for us on today. Now listen, let me get out of the way. We have so much to cover, but before we get into news that you can use, let's head over to Pastor's Corner. So picture this, Ebenezer in London. That's right, we're going to London 60 years ago our pastor, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., received the Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo, Norway. But on his way over, uh, he was invited to make a quick stop at the St. Paul's Cathedral in London. In honor of that 60th anniversary, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral has invited me to preach. And so I'm going to take with me members of my Ebenezer Posse, inviting you to join me in London August 30th through September 4th. I'm preaching on September 1st, going to deliver a lecture, but we're just gonna spend some time in London. Can you imagine that? Just having a good time, taking in the sights, the sounds, the history. We'll do some mission work while we are there. I want you to join us for a special information session on Zoom, Tuesday, April 16th at 7 p.m. Ebenezer in London, Ebenezer everywhere. Sign me up. <laughs> Listen, join us for two and a half days in Dallas, Texas, as we attend the Multi-Faith EMI National Conference happening June 24th through the 26th. You can scan the QR code to register or use the link in the church newsletter. Family, we are already engaged in our Ebenezer and St. Luke's Episcopal Church book study. That's right, this year we are using the Church Crack Open as our discussion by Stephanie Spellers. Register to participate using the link in the church newsletter. This conversation takes place of our Navigating Our World experience on Wednesday, and so we invite you to connect. Hey, all aboard seniors ages, ages 60 and over, save the date because on Saturday, April 27th at 7.30 a.m., the seniors will be leaving from the 407 Auburn Avenue to travel to Macon, Georgia and tour the Tubman African American Museum and enjoy the 23rd Pan-African Festival of Georgia. See the church newsletter so that you can sign up and join us on this amazing experience of culture. The Birth Month Council is excited to announce this year's new members reception and churchwide ministry fair, which will happen on May 5th in front of the Bell Tower. This is a time when we meet all of our, and meet and welcome all of our new members, as well as encourage everyone to get connected to a ministry. Listen, guests will be given tickets upon exiting the North X for complimentary sweets and treats as we enjoy entertainment, face painting, fun giveaways, and more that will happen on May the 5th. You don't want to miss it. Mamas, you know we love you so much that we want to celebrate all mothers and mother figures in our annual Mother's Day tribute video. Submit a photo of you, if you have little ones or big ones who can't submit for you, a photo of your mom or mother figure in your life for our tribute video. Scan the QR code on the screen or use the link in the church newsletter to upload your photo today. Well, graduation season is coming up and the Ebony 
Caesar Scholarship Committee encourages all graduating seniors to high school seniors to be specific to apply for the 2024 Ebenezer Scholarship. Three scholarships of up to $10,000 each will be awarded in the areas of academic achievement, community service, and arts. All graduating high school seniors who apply will receive up $250 or at least $250 as a graduation gift. That's right, everyone who applies receives at least $250 as a gift. Deadline to apply is May the 5th and the award recipients will be notified on May 21st. Oh, and save the date because Graduate Recognition Sunday is Sunday, June 23rd. And we want to see all graduates in their caps and gowns as we celebrate our 2024 graduates. See the church website or the newsletter to apply. Now, family, we are all out of time, but there is so much happening in the life of Ebenezer. So we need you to stay connected to our church newsletter or the events page so that you do not miss anything that happens here at the church. So listen, one more time, Ebenezer Everywhere, will you share this broadcast? Will you let everyone know that we are about to worship? As a matter of fact, let's celebrate our April birthdays. Give it up for April. Oh. With the Stevie Wonder song that was written for our most famous member, MLK. Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Come on, let's give our April birthday, Mom. Babies, a round of applause. Come on, let's stand together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I don't think you heard me. I said, O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Come on, God's been better than that. Give God praise in this house. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise be unto God. We say welcome to the Ebenezer Baptist Church. We're grateful for those who are in the sanctuary. We're grateful for those who are in the virtual sanctuary. We are Ebenezer everywhere. Matter of fact, why don't you tell your friends everywhere that they can Join us right now for worship. That's the thing about church these days. You can tell them to drop on by Auburn Avenue, or they can drop by and see us on YouTube right now. That's pretty easy. Go to YouTube and find us. Tell your friends we're at worship right now. You can also find us on our Facebook page. You can find us on the church website. I know that you're going to be blessed by today's worship service. I know that you can support our ministry. So proud of all the ministries of Ebenezer Church. We are, church, we are a church committed to spreading God's love and God's justice all around the world, serving our members who are here uh, from cradle to the grave, but then reaching out and saying a great big God bless you to the whole country and to all those that we can touch. So if you want to support our ministry, know you can do that at any time. Go to our website, EbenezerATL.org, download our church app. That's another way you can give. You can use the QR scan that's on your screen. You can text to give. You can mail your tithes and offerings to the church. Anybody other than me glad just to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. Come on, thank God for waking me up this morning. Thank God for starting me on my way. Come on, men. Let's sing to the glory of God. Let's sing to the glory of God.
marvelous, marvelous, the Joseph L. Roberts Men's Chorus. We give God praise for the men. And it's good to know that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Our God saves, and our God hears. world where there's so much noise, our God hears and answers prayer. It's prayer time in the life of the church. Our God hears and answers prayer. The scripture says he has kept count of your tossings. Isn't that amazing? God has kept count of my tossings. Seven billion people on the planet. God has kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in a bottle. They are in his record. So we pray for you and your individual and private struggles. We pray for you as you go through that which no one else understands other than you and God. We lift up the sick and the shut-in members of our church. The list is always longer than the list. but he has kept count of your tossings. Put your tears in a bottle. We pray for those who are bereaved, those who've lost loved ones in recent days and months. We pray for those for whom this day or this season is some anniversary of a death. Sometimes certain time of the year rolls around and tragic memories. We pray prayers. And we bless this morning to the glory of God, Opal Promise Talbert. Please come. As they come, let, let me say that we lift up Eric and Felicia Dunlap, lost their aunt, Dorothy Smith. We pray for Deaconess Michelle Barnes and the loss of her aunt, Annie Rose Mercer. We pray for Kimberly Elizabeth Brown, longtime member of our church, who lost her father. Pray for Kimberly, who lost her father, Howard Brown. We continue to pray for the Fault family. We lift up President Jimmy Carter. We pray for families in war-torn countries. We pray for peace at a time when there are escalating tensions in the Middle East. Please, beloved, pray for peace. Pray for peace. We pray for a peaceful world that might embrace the promise of Opal Promise Tolbert. What a wonderful name. Born February 17th, 2024. We pray for her. We pray for Tanisha, her mother. We thank God for grandparents and godparents. Let us pray.
as we live in the shadow of the resurrection are reminded that it is still Easter. Hear these words, I tell you that the one who believes in me will do the works that I do and in fact will do even greater works than these because I am going to God. Let us pray. The God whose love who knows no bounds and Jesus, the one who empowers us with a spirit of love and power. We come this morning in the shadow of the resurrection to proclaim that it is still Easter. It is still a time when we celebrate and take courage from the power of the resurrection and are reminded that we do not need to keep our gifts or talents hidden behind closed doors, but to proclaim them powerfully in your name and boldly live lives infused and grounded by your love. In this Easter season, we are reminded of the unrest throughout the globe in places we can name easily and others that we cannot. And all of those places help us wage peace through our actions of prayer, along with our hands and feet. In this season of Easter, let us recognize the places where our congregations and communities have been cracked open by external and internal forces that have forced us out of our comfort zones. May we be ready for and open to your spirit of transformation and love. In this Easter season, some of us come barely able to make it in the door or turn on our computer screens due to the pain and challenges of this season, and others come numb and unsure what comes next, while others yet come with a song in our hearts and are ready to shout it from the mountaintops particularly as we celebrate this promise this day. We, celebra- we pray that wherever you are, wherever we are, you are there also. So please meet us where we are. Provide us with the presence and companionship of the divine that each of us needs at this very moment. So this morning, we claim your promise that we are indeed capable of doing even greater things empowered by your spirit. In this season, you remind us that death does not have the last word. Your love does. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, amen. And now, beloved, we are all the children of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. Opal, promise Talbert, behold the only thing greater than yourself. you and keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine upon you and give you peace. Let the people of God say amen. Amen.
standing here Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best See, nothing cannot get you by surprise. You've got this figured out, and you're watching us now. But when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and step in. And everything we need to supply You've got this in control And now we know that you made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over Lord, you, you made a way and we're standing here only because you made our way. Hey, you made a way. And now we're here looking back on where we've come from. It's because of you and nothing we've done, no. To deserve the love and mercy you show. But your grace was strong enough to pick us up. Now you made a way when our backs were. Away. And we're standing here, and yeah, standing here only, because only because you made a you way, made a you way, way yeah. made a way. When our backs were against the when wall, the wall yeah. and it looked yeah. as if it was over. Lord, you, you made, made a way. way, and we're standing here. Cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Cause walls to fall. Impossible. We're standing here, yeah. Only because you move. Cause walls to fall. Cause your power, Lord. Perform miracles. There's nothing, Lord. That's impossible. Car broke down, Lord. You made a way. I was riding on the bus line, and you made a way. Was your favor and mercy? You made a way. 
And I don't know how, no. Said I don't know how, no. standing here the adversary tried to knock us down but we're standing here somebody said it was all over but we're standing here only because you made a way grandma said God makes a way out of no way you made a way. Praise be unto God. I believe there's a witness in the house. I believe there's a witness. You made a way. Continuing now in this season of Easter tide. from the Gospel according to John chapter 20. The reading begins with verse 30, reading from the New Revised Standard Version, John chapter 20, beginning with verse 30. Now, Jesus did many other signs, many other signs signs. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that through believing, you may have life in his name. And then chapter 21. Let's turn to page chapter 21. Verse 25. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. I just want to talk for a little while from this subject. I just can't tell it all. I just can't. I just can't tell it all. We live in a world where speech and words reign supreme. 
somebody's talking, it seems, all the time. Whatever limitations of resources, supplies, money, housing, or transportation we may have, and whatever we may lack in some of the critical intangibles that are necessary for authentic living, for the good life, like love, old song, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Whatever we may lack in love and compassion, in friendship, in knowledge, in peace and happiness, in joy, in discernment and direction, whatever else we may lack, there is one thing that we do not lack. In our world and in our society, there is no shortage of words. Words, words, words. Sometimes empty words. Words everywhere. Some folk talk just because they want to say something. Wise people talk because they actually have something to say. My, are we not a loquacious culture? Thanks to the tenets of our democracy, we have it written in the charter documents, you see, freedom of speech. And the genius of our technology, the information age, artificial intelligence. Nowadays, you, you don't even have to write all the words. You can put ideas in the computer, and the computer will generate words for you. Lawyers and other folks who are supposed to be writing briefs got artificial intelligence. I promise you, by the way, this sermon was me and the Holy Spirit. I don't know, they might be able to teach artificial intelligence how to hoop, I don't know. The technology and the genius of media and cable and social media, Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever they call it now. Ours is a chattering culture where people need, never shut up. Uh, there, there's some old men who, who get up 5 o'clock in the morning and tweet things that create chaos. <laughs> All over the world. Throw the whole government into... <laughs> chaos. Always talking. Sometimes there are three people sitting in a car together. Everybody's having a conversation, but except not with the people who are actually in the car or at the table. I can never seem to escape words. And um, we watched this grow, certainly over my lifetime. I, I remember this old R&B song where there was this brother whose woman had left him, <laughs> Lenny Williams. And he sang, because I love you. He said he called his friends, couldn't get no help. He just cried through the whole song. He crying more than he's singing. Y'all women laughing, but y'all like all that begging and crying and carrying on. He said, I went and I watched television until television went off. Tell the 30-year-olds, they don't know of a time when television went off. I'm showing my age. I remember when television used to go off. They sang the Pledge of Allegiance. You saw the flag, and then it said, beep. <laughs> but now television never goes off, and the conversation never ends. That's our 21st century reality. Everybody's talking, saying nothing. 
but it is a truth not lost. It's a 21st century reality that is not lost to this first century gospel. But when the author of the gospel of John decided to talk about God and about what God had done for us in Jesus, when he got ready to describe him, he who was born in Bethlehem, and nurtured in Nazareth, and baptized in the Jordan, and shared the good news in Galilee, and was crucified at Calvary. When he got ready to talk about the significance of the earthly span of the one who is our life and our light, he says, after the resurrection, after Jesus had, had been crucified at Calvary, and betrayed by Judas, and denied by Peter, and doubted by Thomas after he had been hung up by hangups and rose on the third day uh, he said how in the world can I talk about this Jesus and John the first century writer describes Jesus as speech itself first chapter of John in the beginning was the word the Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, and dwelled among us, and we beheld God's glory, or oh, the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is God talking to us in a special way. Jesus is the God of creation rapping to his beloved like Lenny Williams. I, I reached for you. I called out to you. Jesus is God saying that you are the apple of my eye. That in a world that, that denies your humanity, in a world that would tell you that you are something other than a child of God, Jesus is God wrapped up in flesh, demonstrating God's unconditional love. In other words, Jesus didn't simply preach the word, he was the word. God's own word made flesh among us. God is trying to to talk to us. God sent all the prophets, Jeremiah and Isaiah and Amos and Micah, trying to talk to us, trying to win back God's beloved. And when we would not listen to them, God decided to come God's self, wrap God's self up in, in the flesh, became a vulnerable baby came preaching good news to the poor, opening the eyes of the blind, setting the captives free, centering the most marginalized members of the human family. Jesus is what God is like. Jesus is a divine selfie. Posted so that we could know something about the character of God. God who loved us enough to come and see about us. That's who Jesus is. God's, God's intelligence and God's intelligibility. The Word. The Logos. A divine selfie. Brought closer so we can know what God is like. And so thank God for John. There's a reason why you gotta have all of these gospels because no single gospel can capture him. And so they all, each of them have a way of talking about him. Matthew sees Jesus as the great teacher. Mark, he was the healer and the worker of great signs and wonders. For Luke, he was the friend of the poor, the outcast, the oppressed. But for John, he was God's speech incarnate the wisdom and the word wrapped in human flesh. And so I submit to you that the gospel of John is indeed a gospel for the 21st century. John understands the power of speech. 
It is a gospel for the literati and the intelligentsia, but it is also a gospel for folk culture and oral culture. The ability to tell stories the way poor folk do, tell stories in folk stories and, and in sayings. Grandma had a way of saying stuff and you knew exactly what she meant. Sometimes my mama had a way, you know, of speaking in parables or speaking in divine metaphors. She say, your mouth is gonna write a check. <laughs> See, y'all know the rest of that, that your butt can't catch. Mama was a philosopher. Thank God for John, reminding us that God loved us so. That God decided to show up and walk among us. Matthew, Mark, and Luke had already told the story. But he decided that he needed to tell the story from his point of view. Others have testified. But I've got my own testimony. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. What the Lord has done for me. Is there anybody here who has your own testimony? Thank God for the gospel to call into Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. But I've got my own gospel. I've got my own story of the good news of Jesus Christ. And if you hang out with me long enough, you'll know the source of my strength and the strength of my life. He is the one in whom I live and move and have my being. He is my all in all. John says, I am writing so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God. And that through believing, you may have life in his name. And I just want to tell somebody this morning, doesn't matter who you are, through believing, you can have life in his name. You may feel like you've come to a dead end and you're about ready to give up on yourself, but is there anybody here who don't mind testifying to somebody who doesn't already know that if you place your hand in the hand of God, if you would trust in Jesus, you can have life in his name. In his name, demons quake. In his name, we're healed. And so he says, I've told you some things, but I have not told you everything. You know, some of us want to know everything before we decide to give God our all. And that's very interesting because you don't require that of anything else other than God. You say, I, I would give my life to Jesus. Y'all get real deep. I, I, I would give in to, to faith, but I don't know. I'm not sure about this organized religion. First of all, if you hang out, you'll realize we ain't that organized. <laughs> you want to know everything before you decide to give your life over to Christ. You ought to think about that because you did not know everything about your husband or your wife before you got married. You may have thought you knew everything, but you discovered that you didn't know everything. Say amen quietly. So you can stay married. You did not know everything about the company before you took the job, but you knew you needed a salary. You did not know everything about the school before you decided to go, but you knew you needed an education. And because you needed an education and because you needed a salary and because you needed a companion, you took a leap of faith. I'm telling you that God isn't the only somebody about whom you have taken a leap of faith. If you would take a leap of faith for mere mortals who disappoint you every day, if you will take a leap of faith and get on a plane 
and fly in an iron capsule that is being flown by a human being, you don't even know what they had to drink before they got behind the wheel. If you would take a leap of faith and eat food in the restaurant and you never even met the cook, how in the world would you not place your faith in the God of creation, the God of salvation, the God who came to give you life and that more abundantly? Try Jesus. I said try Jesus. Try Jesus. I'm not telling you based on something I heard. I done tried him and I found out he's all right. John says, I, I, I have not told you everything. I have not told you everything. But I have already told you enough. If you would believe in Jesus, there's nothing stopping you. I've told you enough. If you want to, to surrender to God and not just live your life on your own terms, my beloved, you are without excuse. I know you don't know everything. You don't understand everything even in this book. Neither do I. If we, if we understood everything about God, God would cease being God. I have not told you everything, but God has already told you enough. God has already said enough. God has already showed you enough. God has brought you through enough, protected you enough, preserved you enough, sustained you enough, fed you enough, forgiven you enough, provided you enough, walked with you enough, talked with you enough, preached enough, reached enough, demonstrated enough, orchestrated enough, sacrificed enough, done enough. God has already died enough. You to place your trust in Jesus so that you might have life in his name. You have already read and heard enough to believe. And if you believe, then you have enough to attain life in his name. Abundant life on this side, eternal life on the other side. Not everything is in the book. Those who want to worship the book. Those who are quick to tell you what's in the book. The book is complicated. There are a lot of things in the book. The book points to the one who is life. The book is not life. It points to the one who is eternal life. We read the book to hear the word of God. Be wary of those who worship the book. Be wary of those who use the book in order to beat you down. Slaves, obey your masters. Wives, submit to your husbands. They use the book to beat you down, but the, the, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. There is life breathing through the book, pointing to something bigger than the book. Not convinced with folk who, who walk around carrying big books. A few years ago, there were those who were demonstrating in the wake of George Floyd's tragic murder. Protests in front of the most prominent residents in the world, 1600 Pennsylvania, and, and the occupant of the house at the time decided to use his power in an awful way and, and marched down the street and, and stood in front of a church holding the book and and I remember that that on 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 one occasion someone interviewed him he said I I just love the book it's my favorite book and and the journalist said well just tell us what what verse do you like he said oh I don't want to talk about that he he couldn't quote not one verse couldn't even say Jesus wept And now he's running around trying to sell the book with his name on it as if he wrote it. The Bible does not need your endorsement. 
It is God's love letter to a broken humanity. God, God does not need your endorsement. This is the word of God. This, this is God speaking to God's beloved. And instead of holding up the book and trying to sell the book, you ought to read the book. Where it says, thou shalt not lie. If you open up the book, you'll see that it says, thou shalt not bear false witness. You ought to open the book where it says, woe unto those who crush the poor. You ought to open up the book where it talks about wolves who come dressed in sheep's clothing. You ought to read the book where it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a person sows, that they shall also reap. Don't just hold the book and wave the book. Read the book. These things are written not so you can believe in some mere mortal piece of protoplasm that's breathing only because God breathes through. These words are written so that you might believe in Jesus. And in him have eternal life. But then, John, then John says more than that. He says, not only have I not told you everything, as I think about it, I cannot. I can't tell it all. For if every one of the things that Jesus has already done were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. I, I come here every Sunday morning. I do my best to tell you about, but I can't tell it all. If I just told you who God is to me, we would never get out of church. I just can't tell it all. And that's John's dilemma, having written 21 chapters. That's every preacher's dilemma. Matter of fact, that's the problem with preaching. Have you ever thought about my problems? Sunday comes for preachers every three or four days. And the problem with preaching is that the preacher is forever trying to apprehend that which is inapprehensible. Trying to express that which is inexpressible trying to describe that which is indescribable and speak that which is unspeakable, trying to articulate that which is articulation, the word, in its purest form. And so John says that if books could be written, the ledger of his deeds would create a logistical nightmare because there, there are not enough libraries in the world to contain him. And my vocabulary is too limited. My mind is too finite and fleeting. And my tongue is too clumsy to give an adequate account of God's great benefits. I, I've been preaching for decades now, but I can't preach at all. And so when I grow tired of preaching, when I grow tired of talking about it, sometimes I just have to sing about it. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Sometimes I have to just sing about it. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Every now and then I have to sing about it. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Springs of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon the mount of thy redeeming love. I have to sing about an amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. 
when we've been there 10,000 years, bright, shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun all for a thousand tongues to sing. My great Redeemer's praise. So I just keep on talking about it. But I just can't tell it all. And so I've decided to spend my life trying to just talk about the goodness of God in the land of the living. I have to show up here every Sunday. And when I show up on Sunday, you think this is the main thing. It's really the overflow. Because God and I have been talking all week. God and I have a good thing going on. And so when I show up on Sunday morning, nobody has to beg me to praise God. Because I've been praising God all week long. I woke up on Monday and said, thank you, Jesus. I woke up on Tuesday and said, hallelujah. I got up on Wednesday and said, thank you for being with me. Through hump day on Thursday, I said, I'm still here. On Friday, I said, God, you kept me all week long. On Saturday, I said, I can't wait till Sunday morning when I can show up in the house of the Lord and say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My feet shall stand within thy gates. Oh, Jerusalem, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. Is there anybody here who came to praise God? Is there anybody here who knows he's worthy of the praise? Is there anybody here who doesn't mind saying thank you? You ought to say thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for making my enemies keep still. Thank you. And the more I say thank you, the deeper I'm in his debt. The more I say thank you, the more I ought to say thank you because I'm deeper in his debt. Because by the time I finish saying thank you, God has done something else. Matter of fact, he keeps on blessing me over and over and over. Matter of fact, every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Yes! Hallelujah, yes! I have not told you everything. There's not enough time. There's not enough books. There's not enough space. My mind is too limited. My tongue is too clumsy. This broken human vessel is too limited but I've told you enough to say yes yes to the one who is your life the doors of the church are open somebody ought to give your life Uh, you've been taking leaps of faith your whole life. Isn't that interesting? Even the atheist takes a leap of faith. Why don't you put your trust in Jesus? Come on. Come on, brother. Come on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, give God praise, yes. Where would I be? If it had not been. If it had not been. For 
for the Lord. For the Lord. On my side. On my side. Where? Tell me where. Come on, come on, come on. Would yes. I be? Where would I be? Welcome. Where? Come on, brother. Come on. Oh, he rocked yeah. me in the cradle of his arms. When he knew. When he knew I had been mad about the storm. So if it had oh, my brother. not been for the Lord on our side, tell You can still come. This is the house of God. And increasingly, we're looking like the kingdom of God. Everybody's welcome to Ebenezer. Bless you. Did you hear me? Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. This is the house of God. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. Male, female, gay, straight, Democrats, Republicans, Independents. This is the house of God. Come on. Oh, he kept my enemies. Oh, he kept my enemies away. trying to get it right. Can I, can I? All of us are trying to get it right. We're all on the journey. Turn to that neighbor again. Ask him, do you have a church home? Ask him, do you have a pastor? Tell him the pastor's still waiting. You can still come. You can still come. Pastor's still standing there waiting. Come on, where would I be? Oh, where Praise God for these wonderful folks. Give God praise. You all would go. Who's taking them? Please go with our assistant pastors. Follow Reverend Olivia Maxwell. She'll show you what's next. 
we will gladly receive you. Come on, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Sometimes God just blows my mind. Keeps on blessing me. Over and 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 over. Please be seated. We're about to go home in about two minutes. About two minutes. Where are my uh, adults who are visiting from Temple Aaliyah of Needham, Massachusetts? Come on, stand up. Good to see you. We got some folks from the Boston Caitlin School AP African American Studies class. Where are they? Where are they? All right. We're glad in a moment where some states are trying to ban African-American studies. We got the AP African-American. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> Let me quickly say, as I've, we've been saying, uh, we're going to London uh, Memorial Day weekend. I am preaching the 60th anniversary of the speech. What did I say? Memorial Labor Day weekend. I knew it was one of those holidays. Labor Day, not Memorial Day, Labor Day, September. In September, we're going to London. I'll be preaching at the St. Paul's Cathedral 60 years after Dr. King preached there. And I want some of y'all to go with me. Angela, come on. That's your uncle. Stand up. This is Dr. King's niece. Stand up, Angela. I want members of the King family to go with us. I don't know. <laughs> well, 350 people have signed up saying they're interested. We're going to need a charter, a plane. Everybody, come on. We'll, we'll figure it out. We're going to London, but there is an interest, and we've already had the meeting. There's a Zoom interest meeting on Tuesday, April 16th at 7 o'clock. See the newsletter for details. This Thursday, Ebenezer and Choose Healthy Life We'll partner for another live faith, live faith and fitness exercise. Learn more about choosing a healthy life in the Roberts Fellowship Hall at 6.30 this Thursday. Next Sunday is Creation Care Sunday. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Uh, an incredible uh, program has been planned for next Sunday. So we'll see you next Sunday for Creation Care Sunday, we'll have fun Earth Day activities after church. We'll have the farmer's market set up. So, I mean, fresh collard greens is reason alone to come to church. <laughs> come on, thank God for collard greens. <laughs> thank God for turnips. <laughs> thank God for rutabagas. Uh, <laughs> See if y'all know anything. All right. Uh, so, women's ministry has a table in the narthex. Talking about Women's Day right after church. Finally, let me say that um, one of our beloved members sent me a text message. She said, Pastor, I'm moving. And I was heartbroken to hear this. Uh, but Nina Hickson is the attorney for the city of Atlanta. She's an incredible attorney, graduated from Emory. She was an assistant U.S. attorney uh, for the Northern District of Georgia. By the way, the, the U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Georgia now is Ryan Buchanan, who's a member of this church. But Nina used to work in that office. She's been general counsel for Atlanta. She was the judge for the uh, juvenile court. She's an incredible lawyer, very active in our church. She's moving to the DMV to be closer to mama. Stand up, Nick, Nina, good to see you. Bless you. Wonderful. We'll miss you, and we love you. All right. I think that's it. Again, next Sunday, Creation Care. Come to church next Sunday and bring somebody with you. Will you do that? Invite somebody to come to church with you next Sunday. I love you with the love of Christ. 
I wish I could say more, but I just can't tell it all. Keep the faith and keep looking up. Too many things have made the preacher stop the benediction cold. But I've been running. I'm sorry, y'all. Yesterday was a busy day. We went to Louisville, Kentucky, celebrated our son and daughter. <laughs> Pastor of uh, Greencastle Baptist Church in Louisville. I've been everywhere. And I'm standing here. Uh, I forgot to raise the offering. Yeah, you come on. <laughs> I feel good, but not that good. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. One, one of my trustees, he came all the way down the aisle since nobody else said anything. And I was like, what is Ed doing? Ed said, um, we Salvation is free, but these lights aren't. <laughs> I mean, that's real talk, right? Come on, say it with me. Ebenezer Baptist Church is an urban-based global ministry dedicated to individual growth and social transformation through living in the message and carrying out the mission of Jesus Christ. There are many ways to give at our church. Go to our website, ebenezeratl.org. Take your phone right now. Use a QR scan. You can give that way. You can text to give. You can mail your tithes and offerings to the church. Or on your way out, the ushers are standing there at the door. And you can give in that way. All right? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance before you and give you peace now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.